Hello, my name is Jupiter. Uh, I play a lot of Game Jam games, and I'm going to be talking about Game Jams and Game Jam games you've never heard of, um, or I hope that you haven't heard of, uh, so that you can learn about them. So it's a bunch of games that I just love. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about myself first. Um, so I'm a YouTuber. That's what I started out as. I started out by playing thousands of Game Jam games. I used to play about 5,000 Game Jam games a year for a minute each on my YouTube channel. And then I used to write about like the Game Jam games I thought were the best for loads of websites like Alpha Beta Gamer. Um, and then I started writing for RPS. I write for Game Analytics and Game Radar. Um, I co-own a couple websites, Indie Games Plus and Big Boss Battle, where I also write loads of reviews. I very much like writing nowadays. It's really fun. Um, I also am in publishing. I'm the licensing manager of a publishing company of Armor Games. Um, so I deal with collecting, well, obtaining licenses for HTML5 games on the Armor Games like web portal. Um, so we launch daily games. So if you ever want your browser-based game to be on a website, I can probably work out a licensing fee if it's a good fit. Um, that's always worth mentioning because it's really, really fun to be able to fund games a little bit and like buy licenses. Oh, and I also made this website which I always forget about. This is like my first website. It's um, a big calendar of all of the game jams happening online. And I made it for me, and now people use it. And that's really, really great, because it was very expensive to pay for hosting at first. And for me, it seemed weird. Um, but now loads of people use it. I made it when I was like 16, with a bunch of friends. So yeah, that's me. Um, right, so how many of you guys know what game jams are? Wonderful, that's so great. How many people have actually participated in game jams? Cool, I'm gonna very quickly talk about game jams and what game jams are for people that may not be as familiar with the variety of game jams that there are. So it's basically you creating a game along with a community of people around a specific theme or diversifiers. And you can have like a month, you can have two days, there's a one hour game jam, there's a zero hour game jam that happens in the time frame of the clock switching over. One just happened because we went forward in time. There's week long game jams, there's bunches of them. A lot of them you can work either in solo or either in teams or solo. There's sometimes judging or rating systems. Some are online only, some are online and in real life, some are just in real life. There's a big variety of game jams. Um, that was the jam for change that happened in London where I was giving a talk about myself. And you were also giving a talk about dogs. <laughs> and it was really fun. Um, so there's lots of reasons to participate in game jams. Uh, developers go, it's the fun part of game development. It's quick prototyping. It's making a game that's fun and playable fast. It's not marketing. It's not polishing, really. It's just making a game. Um, and that's really fun. It's a good test of skills. It's a good way to interact with other developers. It's a good way to get out if you work from home. It's a good way to get out and meet other people and just sort of work on a project that then no one cares about at the end. Like if you don't make the deadline, that's fine. You can just move on. There's no big cost of it apart from time. Um, often there's prizes, which are fun to win. Uh, there's a set time limit, which means you have to finish something. A lot of developers struggle with finishing anything and like shipping games. So this is like a hard deadline. You're done now. It's time to move on. Um, and there's a huge community around it, which is a, what I'm a part of. And I really enjoy being a part of that community. Um, this was the Lunum Dari 41 in Madrid, where I gave a talk. I was the only English speaker in a Spanish game jam. And I gave a talk about game jams. And it was really fun, about tips for game jams. Um, you can find Game Jams on my website. I made it. I'm very proud of it. Um, it's really full. Uh, we had an online map of Game Jams that um, Global Game Jam kind of broke at one point. Um, so it was removed, but that gift is still there. And I have a newsletter that I put out occasionally when a lot of good Game Jams are coming up that I just blast out to everyone on it so they can get like some hand-selected ones because there's like 40 Game Jams going on at any time. And that's a lot to like surf through and choose, choose from. There's a lot of good reoccurring game jams, like Ludum Dari, there's like three a year. Global Game Jam, it's in January. Um, Asylum Jam is about um, creating games without stereotypes on mental illness, but still making horror games, and that's quite fun. Uh, it's yearly. Proc Jam just ended. It's not technically a game jam. It's a make anything that makes anything jam. So you can make just generative code. You can make flowers that form more flowers. You can make whatever you want. Some people do generative stories, which is just a whole other ball game for me, because I'm like, how do you even generate words that make sense? Um, so that's a really cool game jam that I'm a part of. The Adventure Jam is about making narrative adventures or adventure games. It has a lot of really like in-depth um, entries. It's a longer jam, about a month. 
Pitsy does a monthly game jam where you can use an engine that's so easy to create games and to just make a quick game around a theme. They have a great Discord and community that'll help you. The GM48 is a game maker specific game jam. They do about as many as Ludum Dare, and they have another great community. It's a great starter game jam. Um, there's one game a month which never really has an enforceable theme. It's more about submitting your game to a community, which is just great if you're making games anyway. Um, there's tons more. Those are just some of my favorites, and I enjoy them. I'm going to tell you why there's so many game jams. It's because Game Jolt came out with a system to make your own game jams, and then Itch made out a system to host their own game jams, and now there's just thousands of them because anyone can make them. And if you make an online game jam, uh, it's pretty simple using either of these platforms, and people often join if you advertise a little bit on Twitter. And so there's just more and more. The number's growing each day. So yeah, they're fun, they're quick prototypes. You make short, simple games, they're experiment. Most game jam games have like lots of experimental stuff. Um, I love game jam games and I love just the stuff that comes out of them because it tends to be very creative, very fun, very experimental, very short games. And that's what I like playing. So this is what I've really come here to do. I've come here to show you a bunch of games that I like that are game jam games and hopefully you'll like them too. How do I play these is the question. I don't know how to get the video to play like this. Sorry. It's being awkward. <laughs> Push it over to the other scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not on the screen. Tricky. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Click it. Oh, right there. there you can just click on that, that's good. <laughs> yes! Yay! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so this game was made the Train Jam a couple years back. It's Odyssey. It was one of my favorites from that group of Train Jam games because it's just weird. And sometimes I just want to play weird things. And you're basically these four frogs, wizards, who knows? And you're on a lily pad and you know there's an end to this ocean. You don't know where the end is. You don't know what's beyond the end. You just know there's an end. And that's what you want to do. You want to get to the end. So you're traveling around this foggy place and you meet weird creatures. Like this guy who's like, I have a balloon. And you're like, that's a frog. And he's like, no, it's a balloon. And you're like, that's very clearly a frog. And then they're like, have my balloon. And that helps you kind of fly over obstacles a bit or sort of have like a, a floaty jump almost. And then you can also fish. Um, by like grabbing stuff that's flying out of the water. And I don't know what any of that does, but it stacks up on your little lily pad quite nicely and you can carry it around with you. And it's just a weird game. The characters you meet are equally weird. You're now flying or sort of gliding for a bit. Um, got snails, uh, don't know what they're for, but they're on your boat. You can carry a lot of random stuff and you're just wizards trying to find the end. And I thought it was really clever and I quite like the graphic style to it as well. That's fine. Well, I'm gonna go to the next page. I can go to the next page from there, it's fine. Okay. So this is a game people probably have heard of. Some of these are games you might have heard of, but I really love them. So this is Baba is You. Oh, it's got sound now. Um, so this is like a puzzle game that takes everything you know about games and kind of destroys it and is like, no, it's time for you to learn based on what you make. So you can make different sort of sentences and they define what's happening in the level. So you'll get to levels where it'll be very straightforward. You have to push something, it's fine. And all of a sudden, the next level will be completely different because you have to forget the rules of the previous level, if that makes sense. Because suddenly rocks won't work the way rocks did in the last level. Walls don't matter the way they did in the last level. And that's just really, really an interesting concept to sort of get your head around enough to then play. And I think it's great. And this was originally from the Nordic Game Jam, and it's uh, fully released on Steam now and everything, and it's done really, really well. There's lots of spin-off games from Game Jams. And I really enjoyed this. I thought it was so great. I played it. I got very angry on like the second area where there was tons of lava and I couldn't figure out how to not make it, you know, harmful because lava is harmful by default, it seems. But it's just a really clever idea. Okay. Okay, so this is from the Self Care Jam 2. It's made in the Bitsy engine. Ooh. And it's called Beach Dog. 
And it was just a wonderful little game. You play this dog and you're a dog and you're exploring the world as a dog and that's it. And I love it. I like being a dog. There's no worries. Your, your owner has gone out and told you that he'll be back and he does come back. It's fine. It's just a happy little game where you explore. You smell flowers, chase birds, you find a ball, you can find food and water if you want. And it's just like a really simple, really cute little game um, that's well worth checking out. I like that they did rainbow words. That's quite fun. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a cute game. Uh, you can go find your human if you want to play with him, if you want to, if you miss him too much. It's very cute. And this was simple. This was made in like a month. Yeah. Uh, One Room Dungeon is a game that I actually went on and licensed uh, a different version of it for Armor Games, but this is the first version of it. It's from one of the Ludum Dares. Will it load? Yes. Uh, this is made in Pico 8, I believe. Um, and basically, you're this crazy arm flailing man, and you're running around the dungeon, and what you have to do is just tap all of the buttons. And then it'll just move you to the next area once you hit the wall. And at first, you're kind of going through this dungeon, um, and there becomes like stronger and stronger enemies that you're just sort of avoiding, and then smashing into the wall when you move up. You can't hurt any of them. But eventually, it becomes like bosses that you have to sort of weave around and get around to hit into the wall. And you got health packs as you're going, but it's very easy to die. It's a very challenging game. Uh, and I quite like that I didn't have to like hurt any enemies. I just had to run around and push buttons and then hit a wall as hard as I could. Uh, and I really like the flailing man character. I think he's great. Um, the way that they've done bosses, and they do sections as well. So eventually you get to like a bluey section that's kind of reminiscent of ice that's a bit slippery. And then you get to like a, a more fiery section. So there is like different dungeons for you to explore once you get to them. And that's shown by like the top bar there. Um, it shows you different areas. And it's just a really nice little game. Icy depths. So that sort of changes the play and also the enemies. Uh, this game had a full Steam release, but I played it back when it was made for the GM48. And it's called Forager, and it's like an idle game that's not idle, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't play it like an idle game, but that's how they've marketed it. And you basically are in this island, and you're kind of foraging like any other game. And then slowly the island starts growing, and you unlock other areas of the island, and they're like random which areas you get. So my first playthrough, I got a fairy that was demanding money but also giving me magic. I don't really know what magic did. You can invest your points like that you gain over time into different skills and abilities. I ended up investing mine in cooking because I like cooking and I ended up being able to cook loads of stuff. Um, and you just kind of play on your island and help it grow and get bigger and take on more stuff. Um, and there are like so many different routes to play through and because all of the islands are just random, you get so many different weird islands all added up. And it's just a really polished, well-made game. Well. At night, there's so many mobs that spawn in. There are bosses. I didn't go down the boss route. I went down the very subtle farming route and didn't take on anything at all that would kill me. Uh, but it's just such a, a good concept. And I, it can be played idle. You can just let it go in your background, and you can stay alive and keep farming. And that's quite good as well. Um, Shadow of the Red Hand was made for Lunar 35. It's made by Andy404 on Twitter. He makes really amazing games. He makes really amazing menu screens, which is a weird thing to have. But often he won't finish Game Jam games and he'll submit a menu screen. Um, so he was just, his whole goal for this Game Jam was to model hands. So he made an entire platform using modeling hands. And it's just like a simple platformer, but his own goal was just learn how to model hands. And that's what he did with this. And that's something that I love about Andy because he just picks like a weird thing he wants to focus on. And then he just does it for the entire game jam. And often he makes really weird games. Um, so many weird games, all in 3D, all practicing a different technique, all working on a different like topic almost and he took a break from making game jam games a while back which was a travesty for me <laughs> but he got a new studio space so he's making games again and i'm very excited about them and i thought this was so clever and when he was like yeah i just wanted to model hands i was like oh oh cool yeah okay and you're just a bunny i don't know this is another one by him because I really enjoy his work. This is called Mutant Mole Rat Matchmaker. It's for the one tap jam. 
So one tap jam is like a one button jam. You can only use one button to play the entirety of the game. But he wanted something that wasn't similar, it wasn't simple. So you need to fall in love with a mole rat, obviously, um, from this dating website, duh. Um, based on your preferences, and the hand automatically moves, this hand, and you're just tapping when you hit it, when you hit correctly, or when you think you've hit correctly, and you've got to try to find someone that's a good mate. And then it moves on to another mini game, because this was a bit of a, a longer game jam. Now you have to make it to your mate's house. And you only have one button, <laughs> so movement's kind of hard. You're basically trying to hit the right icon at the bottom of the screen to go the right way. And there's dangers. There's lava, there's ooze, there's bad things. And you also have like a time limit where she's going to get a bit sad. Um, so it's it's a very challenging one button game um, that's just weird and quirky and doesn't make any sense. And mutant mole rats, they don't exist. And he's wearing a top hat. And I thought it was great. Um, there's also like another actual section that I can never make it to where you're actually trying to have the date with the mole rat. And that's again trying to have a conversation basically through tapping one button. And it's just intensely hard, but such a, a funny idea that they made for this gem when most people made just like a tapping to go forward or an endless runner. This is what he came up with. Well worth a follow on Twitter. Um, this was for the game by its cover gem. It's called Hell. And it's a game that I very much looked at the cover, looked at the game, looked at the cover, thought I knew what to expect. This is what I expected. I like Wario games. This is fine. I can crack eggs. So simple. I was really into it. Um, and then while I was playing, um, the game kind of changed. And it changes a couple of times. Um, so as soon as you miss the pan, you're like, oh, game over. No, nope, now you're an egg. <laughs> now you're a chicken, actually, and you're hungry, obviously. You've just been hatched. You have no parent to feed you. So you become this chicken, and you're very slow, and you can eat worms and leave the house. And that seems very normal. It's a very normal chicken. Um, eventually, you grow so big um, that you change your size. Now you can lay eggs. Are people going to cook your eggs? Who knows? Um, Still quite happy with this game. Waiting for it to change again. There's like a third area as well because it's just full of random stuff. And I guess that was a combination of the title being the word hell, but the cartridge being just a chicken and an egg. Um, but you end up basically going into hell and like trying to find different abilities to survive and kill things in hell so that you can then be a chicken again. Um, Here's the other bit of it, actually. This is just a gift. So this is you in hell. You've got an inventory. You've got different people you can interact with suddenly. Who knows why? But it's great. There's like certain endings as well. So this is like a really complex game almost because you can just go and start killing people. And then they're like pretty naughty for killing people, staying in hell. Um, or you can give people the stuff they want and then they're happy in hell. And that causes a whole lot of chaos because that's not how you're meant to be. Um, but it's just a really, really fun game. And it's quite interesting the way that they sort of changed it uh, within the game. Um, Freedom Through the Lens was for the Resist Jam. It was my favorite game from this game jam. And it's a game that I talk about quite a lot. It's in a few of my different talks. Will it load? Yes. Um, this is about you being a journalist. And you basically are going to a protest to cover the protest, but you don't know what the protest's about. You don't know the politics behind it. You don't know what side you're on. You're just there to find out why every other person is there. So you end up talking to like a mother who's just walking through the park and she's like, I don't know why everyone's being loud. I've got a child next to it sleeping. This is all pointless. And you speak to a child who basically is like, no one takes me seriously, but I have opinions and I have well-formed opinions. And you speak to someone who's like, you can't take photographs of me because I'll get fired from my job, but I don't feel that what's going on is okay. And you just end up meeting all of these different perspectives and points of view that would be like people who'd be in a protest, just like an average group of every different perspective of how someone would perceive a political protest. And you get a picture of a lot of them and you write like a little column at the end. And it's just super well written and really nicely done. Um, and it was just made for the Resist jam Game Jam, which was a really great game jam. Uh, that had lots of games that were similar to this, but this one was the most polished. And I really enjoyed the way that each perspective was written without telling you anything about what the protest was. Um, my friend made this game. Um, it's called The Mind is a Small Place. It's a Ludum Dari 38 game. Um, 
this is an interesting game um, because it's very personal to me, but also it's very personal to the developer. And that's the thing that you find in game jam games. A lot of times developers will put a bit of themselves into the game jam. Um, and the developer, Julian, was going through some like really hard times. And he made this game, which is kind of about depression. And it's kind of about being unable to reach out and unable for someone to understand what's going on in your mind. And that's such um, an amazing thing to create and put out there. And it's such an interesting concept to me that developers will put something so personal out for people to play and judge in a game jam. And when he made this, I was like, oh, this is a cool, this is a, this is a cool game. This is very different from what you've made previously. And he was like, yeah, 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 we'll get on to that. And then he gave a talk about making this game and it made a lot more sense because he opened up about what it's about. And it's just um, a very interesting, very strange game. And it has two different endings as well. And it's a lot based on how you're mentally feeling by the end of the game. That's how you make your final decision. And it's so subtle, the way your final decision is. There might be a way that feels more right to you, but it's two very distinctly different endings. And it's just such a such an emotional, personal, well-made game. Um, Commute Jam, oh, sorry, the U Jam. This is Commute. This is just a cute game about um, riding on the train and trying to sleep. I slept on the train uh, on the way to London today, and it's trying to get off at your stop on time and not too early. And I just think it's great. Uh, the developer of this, Sean, he like only made train games for like two years. He was commuting like four hours to work, and that's all of his games were just him commuting to work. And it was really interesting to see them sort of develop over time. And this was one of the last few ones he made. And it was just him sleeping all the time, which I thought was great. And he wrote up about how it was um, just himself that looks exactly like him. And he sleeps on the train to work. And when he first started sleeping on the train, he missed his stop a lot. And eventually got like actually yelled at for it. And he was like, this is a very long commute, guys. I'm so sorry. I made a game about it. And you can just sleep infinitely as well. <laughs> Um, from the Global Game Jam, this is 1977 Radio Ott. And this is like um, sort of a documentary style game. So it's based on some real, have I hit play? Yes. So it's based on some real life stuff. It's based on being a child of the family of a family of a mafia and sort of not really knowing that your parents are a part of a mafia in Italy and sort of not understanding why your dad's doing the, like making the decisions he's making as a kid. And you can end up like, being slightly a part of the mafia, but because it's a documentary, you don't end up fully into it. You end up trying to like destroy the mafia and trying to make the world better because you feel that this like weird mafia thing that's controlling the world isn't actually good, isn't actually positive in society, and you don't want to be a part of it, and you don't want to be the next generation of it. And then it causes a big divide between your family and yourself, and it becomes like a very scary thing for you to do. Um, but it's based on a bunch of like real stuff that you can look up on Wikipedia. The developer did all of this research into it and whatnot. And I think it's pretty cool that there are like these documentary style games that just show teaching in a new medium almost. Face Out Revamped is a game that I licensed. Uh, it was originally a game by its cover and we got to actually create more of the game. I feel like I'm taking ages and I'm so sorry. Please let me know if I'm taking too long. I've got a lot of games I love. Uh, but it's a game where you basically, it starts off as like a narrative story, and then you end up playing Breakout to do any interaction. And I love Breakout, and I thought it was great that you can start like destroying people using just Breakout mechanics. And it, it like, it's so weird. It's so out there, and it's such a great game. And the whole story is that this is you, uh, you've lost your face, and you're on a quest to find the guy who can give you back your face. Uh, because it's gone and you're a samurai um, and there's a whole map now in this game it's like so much more polished and revamped and redone since the game jam version and it's just great uh, there are some like times when you're fighting things and they'll attack back and they'll try to hit your paddle or your ball and you'll take damage from that which is just a very clever way to sort of make fighting different and not just attacking people Ooh, sorry Double Kick Heroes, I feel like has loud sound. Uh, it was a Ludum Dari 34 project that ended up being finished, and it's like a rhythm-based zombie shooter game. And you can design your own music in this as well and play your own music levels if you're actually capable of making music. I'm not. 
but you end up basically just having to hit these like combinations at the bottom which get really really intense while taking on hordes of zombies and stopping places to get like bits of story and new characters and it's just a really really well polished game at this point um that's quite intense <laughs> And the game's actually out now. This is like a year ago. It was on early access. Couple more. The Lion Song Episode One's free on Steam. It was originally a Ludum Dari 30 game. Um, this is actually the trailer, and it's about a girl who's a musician, and she's a very famous musician, and she can't write music anymore. She doesn't know how. Um, so she ends up basically going to a cabin in the woods and talking to some guy on the phone at random. Just like called the wrong number and some guys there talking her through how to get out of this. And she like goes out and tries to get inspiration and comes back and just ends up talking to this guy. And it's a really weird story because like she still can't write, but she's having a good time just talking to a stranger about like her life and about what's going on. And the story continues in various episodes on Steam, um, and it becomes uh, quite a big story. And she ends up, like, really becoming inspired through this. And the first episode is free, so it's well worth checking out. Uh, Party Hard is um, one of my more favorite games that came from Game Jams. Um, this was for the Indies versus PewDiePie Jam, though this version's taken down and they have another game on Steam and then a second game and then another spin-off game because it was picked up by a publisher. But basically, you're this character and you have to go through and kill everyone at a party so that they stop making noise. But you can't get caught, obviously, because that's murder. So you have to like set up traps or lure people away or run from the police and just try to stay alive. And it's very difficult. And the second one, there's challenges and quests and it just becomes a, a very big puzzle game almost through trying to eliminate all of the noise. And this was part of the game jam that PewDiePie ran because he ran a game jam and he actually like played this game, which is how a publisher ended up picking it up, which is pretty cool. Two more. These are more recent. This was for the Ludum Dari 45. It's called When Nothing Came. And I'd call this an interactive poem. That's what the developer said it was. So it's not a game. Um, but basically, as you walk forward as this flower creature, bits of poem come on the, like, on the screen. Um, and you're just kind of experiencing this well-written poem. But then you can start clicking on words and moving them around. And you can start teaching the flower things. Um, so you've taught the flower blame, which isn't a very good thing to teach your flower. And that affects the poem later on. And you'll get to the points where it's a dead end. There's nowhere else for you to go. And I've taught her plight. Um, but you can rewind and you can find new things based on like what words that you've clicked before. So now suddenly there's a key and you can teach her what a key is and go inside the house. And it just sort of like progresses from there in a really interesting way of you building this poem while a poem's written around you. Um, and lastly, um, Trellet, the land of words, was uh, another Ludum Dari 45 game. We're currently covering Ludum Dari 45. And this was a platformer that mixed together Scrabble elements where you're basically collecting, I struggle a bit because I'm bad at spelling words, but you basically are collecting letters and then creating like Scrabbled words to earn more points and earn more letters and get chests and upgrades and more stuff in the game. And it's just a really clever mashup. The theme for this jam was you start with nothing. Um, and they made this. <laughs> so eventually you have to start putting out letters and trying to get them to form words. Definitely uploaded the wrong video of this. This is just me struggling with the controls at first. Because in this editing mode, all of a sudden arrow keys doesn't do anything and it's just mouse only, despite the game saying that it's arrow keys. We end up spelling words and just finding new areas through that and making new platforms, which is a very clever idea. But yeah, if you want to find more Game Jam games, uh, I record them on YouTube. 
Alpha Beta Gamer, I write for them, but not so much anymore. But they have two awesome people that cover Game Jam games. They have a sister site that covers Game Jam games. Indie Games Plus covers Game Jam games and also like free itch games, which are always great. Um, and I cover lots of Game Jam roundups on BigBossBattle.com. That's it.